things are about to get spooky. Hello beautiful people of the internet. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah if you're new here and I'm so excited that you've joined me today. For today's video we're going to be talking about all the books that I want to read this fall. Oh my gosh I'm so excited. September is right around the corner and you guys know what that means. It's the start of all things fall. Pumpkins, hoodies, sweatshirts, cooler weather, crisp leaves. I'm so excited. I am most definitely a fall girl. I love the fall time. That is my favorite time of the year. I just love everything about fall. So I have curated a huge list of books that I want to read this fall. Some of them are fall themed-ish, like thrillery, mystery sort of things. And then some of them I just need to get to this fall. So let's quit jabbing and let's go ahead and dive into my fall TBR. As always, we're going to start with book clubs and readathons first. So these are absolutely the books that I have to get to in the fall months. And whether it be for my book club or other book clubs or other readathons, whatever is going to go on in the months of fall, these are the books that I have to get to. Starting with my book club, Comfy Cozy Book Club. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I do host a bi-monthly book club called Comfy Cozy. I will leave the video where I explained everything down below. That way you can go check it out if you're interested. But in the month of September, we're going to be reading Cherry Pie or Die by C.C. James. This is a locked room mystery that is set in a small historical town and I'm so excited about this one. It sounds like Scooby-Doo. After a traumatic life event, Georgie Tanner returns to her hometown to start her life over at 31 years old. Add sporadic memory loss to the mix and Georgie is a certified hot mess. Luckily, Aunt Cecilia is there with a job for Georgie. She might not feel able to take on the world, but she thinks that she's up for taking tourists through Gainesville, Pennsylvania's historic downtown. The place is American as apple pie steeped in rich revolutionary history, Amish settlements, ghost stories, and colonial manners, Georgie knew it was a safe place to go back to piece her memories together. After all, what could go wrong in a sleepy town like this? And basically I think she is taking these people on a tour when all of a sudden the power goes out and then when it comes back on, there is a murder. <laughs> I don't know, it's just giving classic Clue vibes, giving Scooby-Doo vibes, and I'm so excited to read this with my book club. Also, if you're interested in picking this one up, I wanted to mention that you could obviously pick it up physically like I did, or it's available on Kindle Unlimited, and you can pick it up on Kindle like regularly for 99 cents. So grab it while you can. Also, speaking of my book club, in my book club Discord, we are unofficially buddy reading this series by Brie Baker. It's the Seaside Cafe Mystery Series. And this is following our main character, Everly Swan, who is an amateur sleuth. Everywhere she goes, there's murder. She owns a sweet tea shop by the coast. And this is the most fun, wholesome time. We are reading a book of the month until the end of the year. And this is book number four, A Call for Kelp. So we will be reading this in September. Obviously, since I just told you that we're gonna be reading a book a month for that series for the next few months, I might as well mention the next two because these are gonna be during the fall time. And the next two are Partners in Lime and Close Closely Harbored Secrets. So this is October and November's books. Also in the month of September, I'm going to be participating in my friend Keisha's book club that is a Christian book club called Revive. And in September, I am co-hosting with Jordan at Jordan Elaine. And we're going to be reading Up From Dust. And this is by Heather Kaufman. Heather Kaufman writes biblical retellings. And this is going to be my first biblical retelling. This one follows the story and the perspective of Martha, which I love Martha in the Bible if you've ever read her story. I'm really excited about this one. Again, this is going to be my first biblical retelling, so I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to feel about it. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping I love it. And I'm so excited to discuss this one with Jordan and Keisha. Another book for my book club we're going to be unofficially buddy reading in the month of October. We're going to be just discussing it back and forth in the Discord, not really discussing it anywhere. We're going to be reading The Spell shop by Sarah Beth Durst. I'm not sure if you guys have seen this book anywhere but if you haven't oh my goodness this is the most beautiful book. Look how stunning she is. I just really need to read you this first sentence and then you decide if you want to read it or not. A lush cottage core tale full of stolen spell books, unexpected friendships, sweet jams, and even sweeter love. I'm so excited. I know that I will be trying to participate in other book clubs and other readathons, but I don't want to put them in this TBR 
just because I really don't know what these next few months hold for me. So I really try and take it one month at a time or like honestly one day at a time. So there are many other book clubs and many other readathons that I'm going to try and participate in, but I'm not 100% sure. So I did not include any of that in here, but just know that there are some other things that I might be participating in and this TBR may get longer and longer. <laughs> Now to start the big pile I've got of possibilities. So these are all the books that I have either put off from last fall or they are fall-ish themed books. So I'm just gonna go through them with you. I don't 100% know if I'm gonna get to all of these. These are just my like big pile of possibilities, okay? So when I'm mood reading, I'm just gonna pull from these books. Here we go. This first one, I really don't even know why I'm gonna read this this fall, but I just have been itching to get to this one. I've been itching to get to anything by this author, and that is Midnight at the Blackbird Cafe, and this is by Heather Weber. I've heard really, really good things about Heather Weber's books. I've heard they're really cozy, and I don't know, this book just screams fall to me. And I am a sucker for literary fiction. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but I have a feeling that I'm gonna really like this one. Nestled in the mountain shadows of Alabama lies in the little town of Wicklow. It is here that Anna Kate has returned to bury her beloved Granny Z, the owner of the Blackbird Cafe. It was supposed to be a quick trip to close the cafe and settle her grandmother's estate, but despite her best intentions to avoid forming ties or even getting to know her father's side, Anna Kate finds herself drawn to the quirky southern town her mother ran away from and the mysterious black blackbird pie everyone can't stop talking about. This sounds so cute. This next one is the second book in a series. It's more of a spring book. I'm not even gonna lie, but I'm so excited to finish this series. And this is Plain Deception, and this is by Tara Randall. This is book number two in the Amish Inn mystery series. I forget the first book's name. I'll pop it up here on the screen so you can see it. I read this last month, absolutely loved it. I loved this book and it was so sweet and I was so pleasantly surprised when I went into it. I really wasn't like expecting anything. I didn't know what I was expecting going in and I am obsessed with these characters. I'm obsessed with this small town. I'm obsessed with the faith elements throughout it. Obviously it's an Amish in mystery series so there's going to be like some faith tie-ins. I really really love this series and the quirky characters and I think that if you're looking for a sweet wholesome time this is definitely going to be it but like with a little pinch of murder. <laughs> this series has quite literally taken over my life and I didn't even see it coming. So I picked up Belladonna last month. No, I didn't. I picked up Belladonna this month and I loved it. I loved it so much. I really didn't expect to love it that much. That being said, I had had to pick up the next two books and I will pick these up. And I did take the dust jackets off of them. So we've got Foxglove, which is the second book. Is this not stunning? And then the next one just came out and that's Wisteria. Wisteria literally just came out like a couple days ago and I'm so excited to continue in this series. I think this might be the last book but I again it's a very weird concept because in the first book it's a following a girl named Signa and Signa is like cursed where she can't die and death is a fictional character and there's romance that ensues between Cigna and Diff, but it's so good. It works, just trust me. Next are a couple of graphic novels that I want to reread this fall, and I just adore all of these. The first one being Ghost Roast. This one I read it back in March, and I really do think that this is gonna be perfect for fall time. It basically follows this girl who her dad is a ghost hunter, and she's a high school age girl. She thinks that's really uncool, until she finds out that she can actually see ghosts. I love this one. It gives you Scooby-Doo vibes and I just love the artwork in it. I think it's stunning. So I cannot wait to reread this one. This next one is called Garlic and the Vampire. I also read this one last fall and absolutely fell in love with little garlic. So basically it's following a bunch of vegetables in a garden and up on the mountain, Someone has moved in and they believe that it was a vampire that has moved in. And so obviously, who do they send to check it out? They send our friend Garlic. And Garlic is the most timid little character that I've ever read. And I am Garlic and Garlic is me. And last but certainly not least for graphic novels. Guys, I'll probably read this two or three times in the fall months. I absolutely 
love this book so so much i know how it ends i know everything that's in this book am i still going to reread it probably three or four times absolutely this one is following our main characters josiah and deja and they are high schoolers going into college every year they work their town's pumpkin festival fall festival sort of thing and this is their last year working it because they're going off to college and Josiah really likes this girl, so Deja decides to help him, no matter what, talk to this girl. And they hit a few roadblocks on the way. And let me just tell you, the best part about this whole book is the food and all of the festival vibes that it gives. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I just love this book so much. I need that right now. Okay, let me tell you what that is. It's vanilla ice cream sandwiched between two wedges of pumpkin pie on a stick dipped in chocolate. Things are about to get spooky. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about my spookier reads. I'm gonna let you know this front and center. These are not gonna be for everybody. I can read a lot of things. I'm very tolerant to a lot of things and I know not everybody is. So just know, that these next few books are going to be a little bit spooky. They're going to be scary. They're going to be like horror-ish, thriller-ish books. So if that's not your cup of tea, then that's not your cup of tea. But it's my cup of tea and I'll drink yours and mine. This next book I need to read for my 12 books by 12 friends and I've been leaving it for fall time. And this is Wayward and it's by Amelia Hart. I don't really know a ton about this one. I have heard very mixed things about it. I know that it has like a witchy plot. I think it's about a girl who flees away and then ends up staying with a witch. I'm not 100% sure, but I would like to get to this one because I want to know like my thoughts on it because I want to form my own opinion on it. So yeah, hopefully I will get to this one soon. This next one I'm kind of nervous about. I'm not even gonna lie. I picked it up yesterday from the bookstore, like the used bookstore. I found it in my local used bookstore and I was so excited, but also really nervous <laughs> because I love this author so much, but I'm nervous about this book. And that's Black Sheep by Rachel Harrison. Rachel Harrison also wrote Cackle, which is one of my favorite books of all time. And I really didn't think I was gonna like that one, but I ended up loving it so much. It was like more of a cozy horror. I don't think this is gonna be cozy horror. <laughs> I think this is gonna be actual horror. I picked it up knowing that I may not like it. I picked it up that I may like put it down halfway through, um, but I have to know my opinion on it. I love Rachel Harrison's writing so much and I could potentially see her being one of my favorite authors. I just have to know if I'm gonna like this book or not. All I know about this one is that it follows our main character who left home and then she has to come back for a funeral, I think maybe. And I think that it has some cult vibes. So if that's not your cup of tea, I ain't making you pick it up. This next one, y'all, I meant to pick it up last year and I didn't. And I love me some Grady Hendrix. And it's How to Sell a Haunted House by the one and only Grady Hendrix. I love Grady Hendrix. He writes sort of like a funny-ish horror. I think this one is going to be kind of weird because I think it's told in the perspective of a puppet or I just know that there is a puppet involved and obviously a haunted house and you had me at haunted house. This next one I also meant to get to last year and it's called The Unfortunate Side Effects of Heartbreak and Magic and this is by Brianne Randall. Again don't know a ton about this one but I do know that it has been compared to Gilmore Girls vibes and again you had me at Gilmore Girls. Following the theme of Haunted House vibes, Starling House by Alex E. Faro. This one is following our main character, Opal, and Opal is not doing too well financially. I think she's also trying to support her and her brother, and she really loved this book called The Underland, and in The Underland, there was this house called Starling House, and she has a chance to actually go to the house that inspired the house that was in the book, and when she gets there, she finds a lot of stuff going on in that house. This one seems so spooky. And it's the last of the spooky books, I will stop scaring you now, <laughs> is Ghost Camera and this is by Darcy Coates. This is going to be a Darcy Coates coded Halloween guys. I can just sense it. Darcy Coates, I can see becoming one of my favorite authors. I read one book by her if that tells you anything at all. I read The Haunting of Ashburn House last month. I really did read that one last month and loved it. I loved it so much. It was supposed to be cozy horror. There was nothing cozy about it. I mean, 
maybe, but I was so scared. <laughs> and guys, I know not everybody likes to be scared in their books, but I do. I think if a book makes me feel something that it just is top tier. So this one is another book by Darcy Coates and I think it's about a person who finds a camera and there is some suspicious activity on the camera. Some of you who do not read spooky books are probably looking at me like, what is wrong with this psychopath? Like she's excited about ghosts. And last, but certainly not least, let's talk about all the cozies that I want to read in the fall time. This first one is Thanksgiving themed, and this is Drizzle with Death, and this is by Jesse Crockett. I will tell you, you might want to save this one for November. This one takes place at a pancake eating contest that is like their pre-Thanksgiving tradition in this small town. And then apparently this very famous person ends up dead and the suspicion falls on the maple syrup company. And our main character, this is her family's recipe. Save this for November. I don't know why I'm getting fall vibes from this one, but I am. Get Away With Murder. And this is by Diane Kelly. I found this at my local used bookstore yesterday. I have always seen the second book in this series there, but I haven't seen the first one until yesterday and I was so excited. I've wanted to read this series for a very long time. This one is following our main character, Misty, and Misty owns this mountain lodge in the Blue Ridge Mountains. And she fixes it up and she opens it up to the public. And then her yoga instructor with the lodge, is found dead. This next one is most definitely a fall read and that is Catch Me If You Candy and this is by Ellie Alexander. I've always wanted to read an Ellie Alexander because I've heard really good things about her books and they're so cute. I've wanted to read Meet Your Baker by her but I think this is gonna be my first Ellie Alexander because I really do want to get to this one and look there's a pug on the cover. Look he's riding in the little car. This next one I so desperately wanted to get to last year, but I didn't get to it, so I saved for this fall, and that's Fatal Fudge Swirl, and this is by Mary Allen. Mary Allen writes the Ice Cream Shop Mystery series that I so love and adore. The first book is Rocky Road to Ruin. Loved that book so incredibly much. This one is following Riley Rhodes, and Riley Rhodes works in an ice cream shop, and obviously it's ice cream themed, but this one, there is a fall Halloween themed wedding, and I believe somebody turns up dead. This next one I just put here on a whim, okay? I'm not even gonna lie, but it's so short and it's so cute looking, and that is The Unexpected Mrs. Polifax, and this is by Dorothy Gilman. Apparently this is a very loved book series, and Mrs. Polifax is apparently a very loved woman. This is giving me Murder, She Wrote vibes for some reason, but I have to read you the synopsis. Mrs. Virgil Polifax of New Jersey was a widow with grown married children. She was tired of attending her garden club meetings. She wanted to do something good for her country. So naturally, she became a CIA agent. She takes in a job in Mexico City. The assignment doesn't sound dangerous at first, but then, as often happens, something goes wrong. Now, our dear Mrs. Polifax finds herself in quite a hot, cold war, and her country's enemies find themselves entangled with one unbelievably feisty lady. <laughs> Is that all of the books that I'm going to read in the fall time? Probably not. I'm probably going to be growing this TBR as time goes on. But as for right now, those are the books that I want to get to in the fall time. And those, some of those I absolutely have to get to in the fall time. That's it, my friends. Thanks so much for joining me today. And I'm so glad that you stopped by on my little corner of the internet today. If you made it this far, go ahead and leave me some kind of fall emoji, whether it be a ghost, a pumpkin, a fall leaf some kind of hot drink, whatever you want to leave, just show me that you were here. And just remember, my friends, this world is a better place with you in it, and I will see you on my next video. Bye, guys.